Is there advice you can give, uh, now that we know the frame, to give to me, Lex, about how to uh, do this podcast better, how to think about this world, how to be a good engineer, how to uh, be a good human being from what take you know your, about me. Take your preoccupation with suffering seriously. It's a serious business, right? And that's part of that, to circle back to the beginning, let's say, that's that willingness to gaze into the abyss, which is obviously what you were doing when you went to Ukraine. It's like, it's gazing into the abyss that makes you better. The thing is, and, and this is maybe where Nietzsche's idea is not as differentiated as it became. Sometimes your gaze can be forcefully directed towards the abyss, and then you're traumatized. If it's involuntary and accidental, it can kill you. The more it's voluntary, the more transformative it is. And that's part of that idea about facing death and hell. It's like, can you tolerate death and hell? And the answer is, this terrible answer is, yes, to the degree that you're willing to do it voluntarily. And then you might ask, well, why should I have to subject myself to death and hell? I'm innocent. And then the answer to that is, even the innocent must be voluntarily sacrificed to the highest good. That's such an interesting distinction. Voluntary suffering. Voluntary, yeah. yeah. Well, that's why the central Christian doctrine is pick up your cross and follow me. And I'm speaking not in religious terms saying that. I'm just speaking as a psychologist. It's like one of the things we've learned in the last hundred years is voluntary exposure to that which freezes and terrifies you in measured proportions is curative. 